Hey there, John Morris here, johnmorrisonline.com. Welcome back to another episode. This one I want to talk about how to learn to code fast real quick before I jump into this, just my own experience with this, sort of where this comes from. I've talked about this before, but when I first started learning how to code, the first language I dove into by chance was PHP. And it took me about four or five years to learn PHP. Now this was back early 2000s, so it was a little bit more difficult, not near as many resources, but it took me about four or five years to learn PHP, and some of that was the fact that it was just my first language, but there were a lot of mistakes that I made in that as well that I learned from, and several years later when I got to the point where I wanted to learn jQuery, uh, I learned from those mistakes and did a lot of things I'm going to talk about in, in this episode, and I was able to learn jQuery to the point that I wanted to, to be, to be proficient enough with it that I could do what I needed to do in about 30 days. And so, again, I just want to sort of go through what I learned uh, from that experience and the things that you can do to learn how to code a, a lot faster than what I think probably you would if you were just sort of to, to go go on it alone. All right, so the first thing, and, and I would call this an obvious one. You've probably heard this before. People talk about it, but I, f I feel like I would be remiss if I didn't put it in here when talking about this, and that is you need to learn by doing, which is you need to build real things as you learn. So, you know, find projects you can build, take courses that include projects in them. If you really are feeling frisky and aggressive and and, and aren't afraid of a, a little pressure, then try to go out and get some clients and learn uh, from learn as you deliver on those projects. I'll say this, my little brother, to his credit, uh, when I forced him to start freelancing, he was taking on projects where he didn't really know how to do any of the stuff and he had to learn it as he went. Now he had me there a little bit as a safety net, but I think that's one of the reasons why he's been so successful was because his first experience into coding, he took on that pressure and he's been able to deal with it at a very high level working with very big companies uh, now that he's doing that. So it can be really beneficial. It can be a little scary, but it, it's a it's a good thing to to help you learn very, very quickly. This is another area where you can learn or you can use friends and family and free projects. I get asked a lot about people or asked a lot from people if they should use free projects to build out their portfolio. I think this is the time to do it, not later down the road when you've actually already learned how to code and you're to the point of you want to start getting hired. That's when a lot of people tend to start thinking about friends and family. I think do it here. And, and the trade-off with your friends and family is, sure, I'll do it for you for free, but I could completely screw it up because I don't know what I'm doing. I'm learning. And that makes it more, I think, of a quid pro quo, makes it a little bit more of an even trade. And you don't feel so resentful doing a free project for them. So this is where you want to use your friends and family, in my opinion. And the big thing about this is it forces you to understand implementation and get you in the habit of doing things from scratch on your own. Ultimately, coding is all about implementation. All the concepts and ideas and, and things are, are, are great, but in the end of the day, it's about putting code to paper, or code to ID, whatever you want to say there, but uh, it, it really is about implementation, and so as you're learning, if you're implementing along the way, it's going to help you a ton, and you're going to learn a lot faster. Now, my pro tip here is to set clear project-paced goals before you start. One of the things that I did and why I was able to learn jQuery as fast as I did is because I had a very specific goal. Uh, I wanted There were several things that I wanted to be able to do, and I listed them out, and I told myself, if I can do these, then that's when I'll be at a level that I feel proficient and I'm good. I'm not just going to go on this endless learning cycle. So have very specific project-based goals and very specific periods of learning that are well-defined so you don't get caught in this trap of just sort of endless learning and never sort of getting out there and doing stuff. So again, set clear project-based goals. By project-based, I mean I'll be able to do X, Y, Z from scratch without having to look anything up. You know, that, that sort of thing. If you do that, then you're going to have a lot more focused learning uh, and, and you're going to learn a lot faster. Next thing is to focus on fundamentals. So I've noticed that a lot of new developers tend to get caught up in pushing towards being able to do cool things. That's sort of the, the language that they tend to speak in. And I was no different when I first started out. But the reality is, is that most of the day-to-day -day work that you'll do as a developer is pretty mundane. 
the stuff that you're going to get paid to do is is pretty simple and sometimes boring and that's just the truth of it so it's simple fundamental things that you're going to learn in the very beginning when you're in that sort of stage of te- being tempted to skip ahead to get to the cool things and i'll just tell you you're going to pay if you do that because coding skills most skills but development skills tend to build on one another so if you skip ahead or you try to go too fast at the beginning it's going to come back and bite you later and you're going to have to go back and relearn some of that stuff so it's important that you really focus in on those fundamentals and they may be simple and seem mundane and boring but those are the things that are going to serve you throughout your coding career now my pro tip here is just to make sure that you have a healthy mix of language-based and project-based courses so Language-based courses are going to teach you sort of the fundamentals of a language. They're going to get into sort of the details and the nitty-gritty, whereas project-based courses tend to be more about building cool things. You want to have a healthy mix because the language-based courses are going to teach you those fundamentals you need, but the project-based courses are going to then help you turn that into implementation, which is, again, what ultimately matters. So the the idea here is you need both. So, So do both. And when you're picking what courses you want to take or whatever, make sure you have a healthy mix. Now, as an aside here, this is what I do in my curriculum. Uh, All my language-based courses contain a healthy dose of projects. And so you'll be building real things as you go through the courses, whether it's HTML or PHP or whatever it is. Uh, you'll be building projects as you go through them. But I also, in my curriculum, I have a number of just purely project-based courses. So creating a blog, a contact form, a portfolio site with an Ajax-powered contact form, all sorts of different things that you might want to learn how to do. So I've tried to put a nice healthy mix Uh, following my own advice into my curriculum. Now you can get access to my curriculum for nothing over on Skillshare. Just go to johnmorrisonline.com slash Skillshare uh, and you can learn more about that. All right, next one is don't get stuck. So this one may be the most important, maybe the most difficult, maybe the most controversial. And, And I could see a lot of people disagreeing with me on this, but in my experience, it doesn't benefit you to struggle to solve some problem for weeks on end. And I've talked to people who've said, you know, they've been struggling with this particular problem or particular problem for, you know, several weeks or months. Um, and that's what's sort of holding them back. And they have this sort of sense that they really need to figure it out on their own, that if they get help, it's going to, it's going to hurt them. And I don't really believe that. Now, It's a fine line because, yes, you want to own your problems and you want to develop the habit of trying to solve things uh, on your own first. You don't want to be that person who immediately, as soon as they have a problem, they go and they ask someone for help um, and they don't try to solve it on their own. That's not a good habit to get into either. But for most things, especially as you're learning, in my opinion, going beyond a day or two is counterproductive. Because it's just going to slow you down so much and it's going to frustrate you uh, and it's going to keep you from making that next step. So in those situations, don't be afraid to to reach out for help so that you can keep moving. Uh, Getting stuck on stuff is the number one thing that slowed me down when I was learning PHP. That's why it took me so long and this sort of stubborn sense that I needed to figure it out all on my own. And like I said, it's probably one of the biggest things I hear from people who do get stuck. So You really want to focus on keep moving and don't let yourself get stuck on something for weeks or months at a time because that's really going to hurt you in terms of how fast you can learn how to code. So again, don't be afraid to to reach out for help when it comes to that stuff. Now, my pro tip here is find a mentor and someone that you can contact in these sort of have on call and contact in these moments that you can talk to so that you can go beyond just sort of getting by the problem and actually understand it at a really deep level like they can explain it to you in depth and you can really understand what the problem is and why the solution that they're giving you works and if you do that these problems can actually become strong areas for you because you end up spending you know a lot of things when you learn them if you just learn it you sort of learn it and move on whereas if you struggle with something You spend a lot of time thinking about it and focusing on it. And then if you figure it out and you get information from a mentor who can help you with it, you end up spending a lot more time on that and you learn it a lot better. So 
uh, they can be roadblocks can be real opportunities for you to, to, to learn something in depth and a mentor can help you to do that. All right. Last thing here then is to break stuff. So one thing that a lot of people do is they'll look at other people's code. And I, when you look at other people's code, don't just read it, get in there and mess it up and break it and try to figure out how it works because you can learn a ton by quote unquote, downloading the thinking behind a really good developer's code to understand why they did what they did. And the only way you can really do that is to get in there and mess with it and don't be afraid uh, to break it. So that's probably been my number. I've always had sort of a hacker mindset when it comes to coding, not in the, I'm trying to hack things, but I'm just trying to break things and disrupt and figure out and learn how it works, take it apart, put it back together again. So sort of take that approach to things um, and you're going to have, you know, you're going to learn a lot more about those things and you'll be able to actually take other people's thinking uh, and, and sort of download it into your brain. So my pro tip here, just make sure you have a place in your IDE or whatever development environment you use to be able to just do this without having to worry about it. It really needs to be something that you could just take the whole thing, delete it, and it wouldn't matter because you don't have anything important in there. It's purely for you going in and messing with stuff and breaking stuff because it's going to get messy if you're doing this right. So those are my four tips. I think if you do those things, you're going to to learn a lot faster and be able to, to get down the path that you want to get down a lot quicker uh, than otherwise. Now, if you liked this episode, I appreciate if you'd support the show, you can do so in two ways. One, you can become a patron over on Patreon. Just go to johnmorrisonline.com slash Patreon to learn all about the perks you get there. You're going to get access to all my courses, a bunch of source code, a bunch of unreleased courses and so source code and videos. And so basically it's my brain dump. Everything uh, that I have pretty much goes on Patreon. Uh, again, johnmorrisonline.com slash Patreon to learn about that. All my official courses go over on johnmorrisonline.com slash Skillshare. So these are my official releases. If you want, you know, well groomed, well, <laughs> well produced uh, videos and courses and a, a sort of a tight curriculum, then that's over on Skillshare. The benefit there is you'll get access to my stuff, but you get access to the entire community, which is over 20,000 plus courses. And you can get access to all of that for nothing when you go to johnmorrisonline.com slash Skillshare. So just head there for all the details. All right, that'll do it. Thanks for listening. We'll talk to you next time.